OK, so we're going to look at a neat way of raising a matrix to a power, which works as quite a nice shortcut even if our matrix isn't diagonalizable like this matrix here isn't. So the standard shortcut approach would be to try and diagonalize our matrix, which makes raising it to a large power much easier. But unfortunately for this example it's not diagonalizable. So normally we would find the eigenvalues by setting the determinant of lambda times the identity matrix minus our original matrix, we can call this 1, 2, minus 2, 5 matrix M, we'd set this determinant equal to 0. So here, doing lambda times the identity minus this matrix, we'd have lambda minus 1, minus 2, we'd get positive 2 there, and lambda minus 5. So if we set the determinant of this equal to 0, we're going to get lambda minus 1, lambda minus 5, and then take away 2 times negative 2, so plus 4, equals 0, and this expands to give us lambda squared minus 6 lambda plus 9 equals 0, and we get a repeated eigenvalue there of lambda equals 3, and unfortunately this original matrix M here isn't diagonalizable. But we don't need to give up at this point and actually carry out the multiplication 10 times here, so there is still a nice shortcut which uses the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. So the Cayley-Hamilton theorem tells us that our matrix M satisfies its own characteristic polynomial, so we can replace the lambda here by M. So we're saying that M squared minus 6M plus 9 times the identity matrix has to be equivalent to the zero matrix. And this turns out to be really useful because let's make M squared the subject, so we get M squared is 6m minus 9i. We can even factor out a 3 here, which will help us out later on, so we have 3 times 2m minus 3i. And then this is going to help us express large powers of m in a slightly simpler form. So let's imagine we just want to go up to m to the power of 4 to begin with, but we can take all of this and just square it, so we have 3 squared, and then we've got this bracket squared here, so the 2m minus 3i all squared gives us 4m squared minus 12m, multiplying m by the identity, this gives us m, and we've also got plus 9 times the identity matrix. But even this expression can be simplified now using our Cayley-Hamilton theorem, because we know that m squared is equivalent to 6m minus 9i, so this is equal to 6m minus 9 times the identity matrix, and this is going to allow us to express m to the 4 as we'll have 3 squared, and we've got 4 times 6m, gives us 24m minus 12m, so it just gives us 12m in total, and we've got 4 times negative 9i, negative 36 plus a 9i, so we end up with negative, we take away 27 times i, and even this can be factorised, so we get in the end m to the 4 can be expressed, we can take out another factor of 3, can write this as 3 to the power of 3 times 4m minus 9i. So this is much easier to just multiply our matrix m by some scalars and subtract some multiple of the identity matrix rather than having to raise our matrix to the power of 4 by hand. And next we can calculate m to the power of 8 similarly by squaring m to the power of 4. So m to the power of 8, we can write this as 3 to the power of 3 squared gives us 3 to the 6. Then this 4m minus 9i term, when we square all of this in the bracket, we're going to get 16m squared minus 2 lots of 36, so minus 72 times m plus 81 lots of i. And again, we can replace our m squared here. We know this is equal to 6m minus 9i. So then we can expand all of this out to give us 3 to the power of 6, and then inside the bracket we've got 16 times 6 gives us 96m, minus the 72m gives us a contribution of 24m, and we've got 16 times the negative 9 gives us minus 144, and then we add 61 to this, so we get minus 63 lots of i then in the end. And here we can also take out a factor of 3 from each of these to write this as 3 to the power of 7 times 8m minus 21i. So this is our nice expression now for m to the power of 8. And now we can work out m to the power of 10 by multiplying m to the power of 8 by m squared. So we get m to the power of 10 is going to be m to the power of 8, so 3 to the 7, and then we've got 8m minus 21i. 
And then we also multiply this by m squared, which I'll write in its factored form, so times 3 times 2m minus 3i, like this. So this gives us 3 to the 7 times 3 gives us 3 to the 8. Then expanding each of the brackets here, we're going to get 16m squared. Then we've got minus 42 minus 24, so minus 66m. And we've also got plus 63 times i there. And we can again simplify our m squared because we know this is equal to 6m minus 9i. So 16 times 6 gives us a 96, and then we take away 66m, so we're going to get inside our bracket 30 lots of m. And we've also got minus 9 and 16 gives us minus 144 again. And we add 63 to that, so then we're going to get minus 81 times i. And once again, we can take out a factor of 3 to write this as 3 to the power of 9. Then we've got inside the bracket 10m minus 27 times the identity matrix. So this is our final expression then for our original matrix m raised to the power of 10. So now we're ready to actually calculate this. And you can see this looks a lot less daunting than have to, having to multiply a matrix by itself 10 times. So now we can basically just read off what m to the power of 10 is here. We can do 3 to the power of 9 and multiply this by 10 times m. So we've got 10, 20, minus 20, and 50 for our 10 times m. And then we also need to subtract 27 times the identity matrix. So 27, 0, 0, 27. So then here we've got 3 to the power of 9. 10 minus 27 gives us negative 17, then we just keep the 20 and negative 20, and 50 minus 27 gives us a 23. So I think this is a satisfactory answer for what m to the power of 10 is, or if you're really keen you can multiply this by 3 to the power of 9, and you'll get first of all negative 3, 3, 4, 6, 1, 1 from the 17 times 3 to the 9, then multiplying by 20 we get 3, 9, 3, 660 and the negative of that 393660 for the negative 20 there and finally for the 23 we're going to get 452709 as our bottom right entry so you can either leave this in this nice factorized form or actually calculate what m to the power of 10 is there and it's really interesting that this method can also be extended to large negative powers using the Cayley Hamilton theorem so if we started with m squared equals 6m minus 9i, then we could actually multiply through by the inverse of m, assuming it exists. And if we're working with m to a negative power, then the inverse of our matrix m does have to be well-defined in order for the problem to be well-defined. So multiplying throughout by m inverse, we get m equals 6, so then this would just give us the identity, then minus 9 times the inverse of m, and then we can rearrange to make the inverse matrix the subject, so the inverse of m would then be 6i minus m, and then we also divide through by 9 like this. So this gives us a nice way, again, just using multiplication by scalars, addition and subtraction of working with negative powers, and we could go to m to the power of negative 2, for example, just squaring everything, we'd have 1 over 81, and then squaring this bracket we'd get 36i minus 12 lots of m plus m squared. But then just like before, we can use the fact that m squared is actually just equal to 6m minus 9i. So just like before, we're only really working with i's and m's in the expression there, and we could go on and on and get into even bigger negative powers there. And there's quite an interesting case where you can use the positive and negative power. So let's imagine instead of working with m to the power of 10, we're trying to calculate m to the power of 30. So we could do this using our repeated doubling argument from before. So you'd have m squared, m to the 4, m to the 8, m to the 16. But then you'd have to express this as m to the 16 times m to the 8 times m to the 4 times m squared, which is a lot more complicated than just doing this as m to the power of 32 multiplied by m to the negative 2. So we can write this as m to the 32 times m to the negative 2. So you could actually combine these two approaches. So we could apply our repeated doubling just like before to get m to the power of 32. Then we could apply this argument again using the 
Cayley Hamilton formula to get m to the negative 2. So it's really nice to see how, even though this matrix isn't diagonalizable, there's still a lot we can do to make it easier to calculate this matrix raised to a large power.